Hello everyone. I wanted to get back into playing Congo and um, I decided I was going to try and uh, play a solo campaign using this supplement that came out a couple of years ago. Um, when this first came out I was quite pleased to get it because it had um, a few new uh, rules for things like wild animals and uh, different dangerous terrain tables and so on that you could you could use and it also had six new scenarios but to be honest it was a little bit kind of underwhelming um, came with a couple of figures which were pretty uh, poor quality to be honest and the final kind of culmination of the campaign um, didn't involve playing a war game it involved um, moving tokens around on these two um, charts which represented the um, the actual throne of thunder itself Mongo Mongo Ma Lobe Mount Cameroon um, so it was a bit if you had played the campaign it would have been a bit anticlimactic I think but I'm going to give it a go um, I'm going to use the confusion rules from the original rule book um, so that uh, it, it makes it, it makes the choice of cards a little bit more random and that means that um, it'll be easier to kind of uh, play as a solo solo game and give it a go and um, I think it'll be uh, it'll be quite fun to do there's a lot there's not a lot but there's a little bit of kind of paperwork and so on which won't make um, particularly good uh, YouTube viewing but I'll, I'm, I'll have to go through a bit of that with you um, as, as I prepare each scenario um, log keeping things like that you, you have a travel log that goes with each character and um, yeah it should be uh it should be doable we'll see how we see how we get on anyway it's worth a try um so first thing i'll do then is show you the um the two factions now this is one of the things um about as i was saying that the, 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 it was a little bit underwhelming in a way um this campaign book and um one of one of the things that you find straight away is that it does give you a recommended um, sort of army list if you like and it recommends you using the uh, official Congo box sets that you can get through War Games Foundry um, but Mary Kingsley who is the central character this lady here who was, was a genuine historical uh, personality uh, niece of the uh, author Charles Kingsley um, who explored uh, sort of Western Africa in the late 1890s um, Mary Kingsley is meant to be leading a white men expedition uh, faction um, and it lists the box set from that but it, and it tells you that it's 70 points but it actually has um, a group of soldiers in it in place of a group of trained Ascaris and that actually makes it 75 points um, so I think what I'm going to do is stick with these uh, recommended army lists as it were in here um, regardless of the fact that it doesn't it doesn't quite uh, marry up in terms of points and um, I'll show you to begin with the uh, figures that I'm going to be using. Okay so we'll start with Mary Kingsley and her expedition. So this is the um, figure that came with the rule set for Mary Kingsley. Um, as I say I, I'm not terribly impressed by either of the two figures that come with the supplement but um, in the case of Mary Kingsley you really need to use this figure because her whole character is that of um, a student of um, African culture and flora and fauna and so on um, so, uh, so she's got to be 
presented as um, bookish. She's got a book in her hand there as a collector. So she's got a bag with African artifacts in. Um, basically, she's not a sort of militant character. She's more of a... Um, as I say, of a, as a, a more of a researcher. Um, so all of the female characters that um, the War Games Foundry do for Darkest Africa tend to be a little bit more um, sturdy, shall we say, more, um, you know, they're holding weapons, that kind of thing, and uh, aren't really suitable. So I'm going to stick with this figure and not, uh, you know, replace it with another one. Um, so in in the recommended grouping, you have Mary Kingsley, you have a Kieran Gozi, who's who is named his his character named Kiva. Um, so they're the two kind of characters that you begin with. Um, again, as the campaign goes on, you do recruit uh, more characters and so on, um, more troop types and. Mary Kingsley's abilities um, improve with uh, success, so um, her stats change basically. Um, so you also have a group of uh, Raga Raga there, who are armed with muskets. You have a group of soldiers which, as I say, um, let's try and get it to focus a little bit better than this. There we go. Group of soldiers. Um, I'm going to use some Sikhs. Um, and as I say, they are um, there kind of accidentally because the, the, in the original box set, um, you're supplied with trained Ascaris. But I'm going to go with what's printed in the book and not what uh, you get in the box set. Um, you have a group of young warriors, sort of native warriors, um, armed with spears. You have a group of adventurers. Um, although two of those have got pistols in their hands, they're actually armed with rifles and you have a group of Ascari so these are um, not trained Ascari and they are also armed with muskets I think yeah muskets so that's the group that you start off with um, that Mary Kingsley has to command now I'll show you the opposing faction. Okay, so on the opposite side to Mary Kingsley, you have this uh, fictional character called Ujawa, who is a witch doctor. Um, this is the figure that actually comes with um, the supplement. Um, it, it's I find it a little bit odd. It was two parts. Um, it's kind of interesting, but in the same regard, um, it's a little bit awkward, sort of crouched over wearing this sort of crocodile skin. So as far as I can tell, um, there's no reason why you can't swap that out for another Witch Doctor figure. So I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use one of the, my War Games Foundry Witch Doctors, this one here. Um, so he's going to take the place of or he's going to represent Ujawa <clears throat> and then um, it's Forest Tribes f faction um, also comes with a chieftain and one auxiliary figure which is a sacred warrior and then you have a group of warriors you have some pygmy archers. Now there are six figures, but they actually split into two groups and they sort of operate in different places, but they're bonded together. So they're quite useful um, 
firing poisoned arrows. Um, then you have a group of um, archers, just ordinary tribal archers, as you can see there. Um, haven't set these out terribly well, sorry, so it's a bit awkward with the camera, but in the background there you have a group of scouts and you have a group of young warriors with black and red and white shields there and in the background there you have a group of wooden duckies armed with muskets and that is the uh, faction that you start off with um, for Ujawa and as I say we're, uh, same as um, with Mary Kingsley um, as the campaign goes on Ujawa's character will improve with successes and um, other characters can be recruited into the into the into the warband right so we're now on to the uh, first bit of um, form filling that we have to do which is getting ready to leave um, so that's all described on this these pages here um, so it says before the campaign starts each player assembles their expedition for the long journey ahead this is done by throwing 1d8 and consulting the appropriate table of results that follow so Mary Kingsley expedition Mary sets foot ashore at Luanda which is in modern day Angola and spends several weeks there gathering the equipment and the victuals that her inland expedition will require roll 1d8 and consult the following table so we rolled a four and four says a newspaper reporter joshua jameson would like to join your expedition and tell the world about it well perhaps not the whole world as the weekly bugle is not very widely read add a reporter to the list of characters of your column so here's the log sheet for Mary so we can tick off Joshua Jameson uh, a reporter and just see if I've got a figure for that right so this guy is going to represent Joshua Jameson Next up, in addition, character joins your column, tick the appropriate box on your travel log, yeah. Following this, Mary travels among the local tribes in order to better understand their customs. Roll 1d8 and consult the following table to see if she's been able to rally some of them to her cause. Roll a 2. A wizened elder offers Mary a lucky charm. At the beginning of your next adventure, draw two additional totem cards. Note this down on your travel log so as not to forget. So I think that goes here. I'm just writing draw two additional totem cards there. Hopefully that's in the right spot. Okay, what comes next? How much time has Mary spent in the port and amongst the locals? To measure this, roll 1d8. If you roll a success, tick off two boxes on the journey length table if this one is a failure tick off three boxes okay so um, success and failure in um, Congo uh, is five or more so you roll various um, dice types obviously a d6 it's harder to get a success than it is a d10 but we're rolling a d8 we need five or more we roll five or more yeah 
so um, take off two boxes on the journey length table so we have now spent already two months <laughs> uh, at the end of the campaign the quicker Mary Kingsley managed to reach Mount Cameroon the more accomplishment points she will receive right okay so that's Mary ready for um, the first scenario next up we have a Jawa so the Jawa must first stand before the elders of the Fang tribe and convince them to assist him. It is a long drawn out affair. Well, 1d8 to see uh, if he concludes successfully. Five. A ceremony is decreed following which the elders give to Ajawa the great Fang drum to protect him during this sacred quest. Add a talking drum to the list of characters of your column. So here's a Jawa's log sheets. We need Kuva, a talking drum. So let's check out if I've got a figure for that. Yep, we've got a drummer, which is this guy here. So uh, this is one of the things about the campaign that might put people off is that you do need a lot of um items i'm sure as it goes on i'm going to find i don't uh, have the relevant figure or piece of scenery or whatever but uh, we'll play it by ear when we get to that okay so we've got a talking drum um having stood before the elders ujaba travels from village to village to recruit warriors has he succeeded roll a d8 three a village headman asks his sons to escort Ajawa through the perils ahead. A group of scouts joins your column for the next adventure only. They then return back home. So Ujawa's column already did have a group of scouts and this is a second group of figures. Luckily I've got three groups of scouts. Um, so these will be used for the jar was column just for the next adventure alone and then finally oh, i think that's it yeah for some reason we don't have to worry how long that's taken the jawa no so we're on to um playing the adventures the adventures of the Mungo Marlobe campaign must be played in a certain order as follows. First conduct, contact. Okay, so we're on to first contact. Just set the table up. Right, ready to go with the first scenario then. So this is called first contact and um, Basically, there are three huts in the centre of the table, each outside each of which there is a token, which for the time being is concealed. Um, they're numbered one, two, and three. And they, <coughs> excuse me, they represent three different masks, which um, Mary Kingsley is keen to acquire and sell to an antiques dealer um, in order to finance her expedition. Um, Ujar was equally keen to obtain them because they um, contain ritualistic uh, powers that he'll be able to use. So um, both sides um, begin at opposite corners. Uh, Mary chooses first of all, so her group is in this corner here. Um, just about get them all on the t on t in within M of the corner's edge. So they're ready to go there. And Ujara is the, op the opposite, diagonally opposite corner. Um, in his case, um, one of the groups didn't fit on. So that is just off table, the Bunduki are just off table. 
um, they can move on with the movement action. Uh, the um, limitations um, on what you can have in your group are slightly different with these uh, with this supplement than the general. So you can have three characters on the table at once um, rather than two in the main rule book. But one limitation is that you're only allowed six groups maximum. And with the additional scouts that uh, Ujawa has, um, he's actually got seven groups. So I've left the pygmies off the table simply because if I don't include the scouts, um, then the composition of the warband is, is exactly the same as it would have been anyway. So I thought I might as well make use of the additional group of scouts for this scenario, especially as um, dotted around the table. Again, I've done this at random, hidden it from myself, so I don't know what is under these tokens. There are two dummy tokens um, representing... Um, well, just uh, errors. But the other two, num uh, which are numbered, will represent discoveries. So that could be a discovery of a particular new type of plant or species of insect or something like that. Um, so two of them will be mishaps if they're uncovered and two of them will be um, additional bonus points for the game and the campaign and so on. And um, it's played on savanna rather than in jungle. Uh, there are meant to be six dangerous terrain um, areas, but I've only got five, so I thought that would be sufficient. And then there are bits of blocking terrain, so I've used termite hills to represent blocking terrain. So um, they can't be seen over and they can't be gone into. Um, and that is all the... Uh, all the terrain set up. I've also dealt the cards out already. Um, oh, at random, I rolled a dice and um, the Jawa has the initiative at the beginning of the game. Um, and I've dealt the cards out. So um, the Jawa, being a witch doctor, gets the sorcery card. These are the three cards that he ended up with. Um, because he wasn't in confusion, you're allowed to swap one of them for another one at random. And he chose to do that because he to get more movement. Um, he has one totem card, which you're entitled to at the beginning of the game anyway. Um, in his case, the chieftain allows a choice. So you, take, you deal two at random and the chieftain's allowed to pick which one of the two he wants. We pick the... Um, extra dice, extra d8 dice, and I think that's everything on his side. In Mary Kingsley's case, um, these are the three cards that she started off with, and she was happy with those, so that gives her another initiative not, not an initiative, another totem card. So at the beginning of the game, she's already got five totem cards, she got two for the uh pre-game um, preamble. One, which you get naturally anyway at the start of each turn. One, because um, she didn't swap any of her randomly dealt action cards. And one, because her ca the, star the number of stars that her characters are credited with is one less than the characters on a Jawa's side. So to balance that out, you get an additional card as well. So she's already got five initiative cards. So now we're ready to start the game. After the first action phase, so there's three action phases per turn. Uh, Mary Kingsley's group have got off to a flying start. They've managed to move all their groups by using one of the totem cards as well as the uh, action card they played. And uh, the Kirin, the group that the Kirin Gozi is with, the Ascar is, has even um, picked up, not only picked up the pace, but gone a little bit further due to uh, the Kirin Gozi's ability. But it does mean that they've picked up a 
a stress token now, which is one of the terror tokens. Um, and on the opposite side of the table, um, not so easy for the uh, forest tribes to move. Um, so they didn't have so many abilities that allow them to move quickly, but the uh, scouts are close to getting into this dangerous terrain here. Um, there are three groups there that have managed to move forward. And a fifth one did manage to move due to the talking um, drum ability. Um, so they were able to move as well using that ability. But again, that does mean haven't put it on yet, but the um, that group there should have a stress token. And Ajar was immediately played his sorcerer card for this turn and successfully rolled on the, um, oh, I think it was called the Mandrel's Dance and acquired an additional totem card. And that's all that's happened in that phase. Okay, phase two of turn one and uh, the forest tribes played this card here. Um, with the movement, the scouts got into the dangerous terrain. They don't have to roll on the dangerous terrain table because they're scouts. And they turned up that marker, which is number five, which um, they, they found a plant, which they regard as a magical plant. Um, so if they keep that in their possession till the end of the game, that will score additional points. And with the um, drum symbol there, they tried to rally off the stress marker, but failed to do so. And that was the extent of their turn. Whereas, again, Mary Kingsley's sides had a, another storming move. They played two cards they played um, two movements plus two additional movements with the totem card so uh, the group of Ascaris with the Kirangozi um, were able to move into the dangerous terrain by drawing another stress token haven't got quite far enough to turn over the token yet um, rolled on the dangerous ta uh, terrain table and one of the figures was taken hostage, but um, they successfully negotiated his release um, by sacrificing totem cards. And um, the, other four, the other four groups, um, no, sorry, beg your pardon, three of the other groups managed to move further forward. Yeah, and that was the end of their turn, or their, the phase of their phase. So in the third phase of turn one, um, the final card was more useful to Mary Kingsley than Ujawa's final card. So she had uh, three terror marker actions, three terror actions to take. So with the first one, um, this group here successfully rallied off both of their um, <coughs> stress tokens. So they are stress token free. Um, and she inflicted uh, a terror test on them successfully. So they picked up a stress token, um, also tried it on that group of scouts but failed. So that was quite a successful turn or phase for Mary Kingsley, but Ujara had three shooting um, actions available and none of his uh, units are in range. So he couldn't do anything in his, t in his part of the turn. So in the uh, first phase of turn two, uh, this group with the Kirangozi here uh, reached the token that was in this dangerous terrain but it turned out to be a dummy and the mishap was that they were to move uh, one short distance towards the nearest enemy and engage in melee if possible but um, that was that meant they ended up there um, 
a long way from the enemy anyway. Um, Mary Kingsley and her soldiers reached the first mask, uncovered it, which is number three. And um, from at the beginning of turn two, you roll to see which side of the table um, the antique stealer is going to meet her. Um, and it's going to be over this side of the table, the centre of the uh, that table edge, just for this turn. You roll each turn. Um, so she's got another two phases to try and get it off of that edge and sell it to the antique stealer. Um, the other groups all were able to move, so managed to move all five groups, um, including this one with the reporter, because... We not only had four movements there, but I played this totem card, giving them another action. So the fifth group was able to move um, over the other side. Um, despite playing a lot of cards, Sajawa's faction isn't doing quite so well. Um, he played the sorcery card and failed, so didn't manage to get another totem card. Um, the action card he played was to rally one group and move another and then he played this additional two action two movement actions with an increased distance on one of the movements so this group here were able to successfully to rally off the stress token um, this group here no i don't think they did anything at all um, this group moved, the Bundukis are now on the table, and the Scouts, with that extra additional distance, very close to entering this dangerous terrain, which will uh, allow them to uncover that token there, but they're moving a little less uh, successfully, the Mary Kingsley group. So in phase two of turn two, Mary Kingsley's group played this card, allowing two groups to move, uh, the first group was the uh, Kirangozis uh, group with the Ascaris, and they picked up the pace, or not picked up the pace, but uh, moved the additional third short movement, therefore getting a stress token, but uncovered mask number one, which is the most invaluable of the three masks. Um, and Mary Kingsley's group are moving... Um, in that direction with their mask in order to sell it to the antique dealer whereas on the um, the Jawas side they played four movements um, and that allowed them to move five groups because this group here um, used the talking drum to activate that group which reached the marker there which turned out to be another discovery I haven't looked up what it is yet I'll tell you in the next turn um, did mean that they by using the talking drum they picked up a stress token and this group of bundukis this group of archers and this group of young warriors all moved as well using that four group movement card okay so these are the cards Mary Kinsley's group played so they rallied off the stress marker from the Kiringozis group and then used this and an additional dice um, to shoot with the soldiers so the result of that was that the success they rallied off that successfully the soldiers um, have a d10 shooting uh, ability anyway Mary Kingsley has D6, so they're with the additional dice, they were rolling six dice against the uh, three scouts who were there. And despite being in D8 cover and going to ground and um, yeah, and going to ground and taking two stress markers, um, they rolled really badly, so they were completely wiped out, which means that that discovery uh, still haven't found out what it is um, is up for grabs now it's been just left on the ground there um, but it's the end of turn two now so Mary Kingsley may not uh, be in the correct part of the table to get 
get the antique off to the uh, dealer now because uh, he's going to move at the beginning of turn three. Um, and the Jawas group had this card left to play. Um, they did use an additional dice roll as well. And that meant that they rallied off um, a stress marker there and a stress marker there. Um, but failed uh, to inflict a terror marker or a stress marker, a terror attack on the Bundukis there who are superstitious. Um, but even so, they weren't the uh, forest tribes were unsuccessful. So that is the end of turn two. Okay, so this was the first phase of turn three. The Jawa played the higher card, so went first. Um, he managed to rally off, I think. Can't remember now. It was a couple of minutes ago. My memory is very short term. But he did a successful rally. Either did a successful rally or a successful terror attack. I think it was a successful rally. Um, then he moved one group his own group, closer to the uh, Mary Kingsley's group there, and then also use this to move, oh God, sorry, beginning to lose, lose track of it, but, but um, yeah, moved another group. Um, Oh yeah, no, he didn't move another group. He threw spears um, from this group here at that group there, um, which have since moved um, and managed to get one kill on them. And that was using this additional dice roll as well. And then he used his sorcery card and um, had to uh, drew a couple of extra stress tokens to throw some more dice but managed to inflict a stress token on that group, which was actually a panic token, which now stops them from moving or doing any other action until they've rallied that off, um, which means they can't pick up that and they can't get to this side here, which is actually where the antique dealer is still waiting. Um, rolled again to see where he was and he's still gonna be waiting on this side of the table. So that was quite a successful turn for Ujawa. Um, Mary Kingsley's group just moved four groups. Um, so the reporters group got to that token that was there. It turned out to be a dummy and the mishap was that they were to move towards the enemy. Um, so they ended up there. Um, they also moved into dangerous terrain and got tangled in vines and picked up a stress token. And because Mary Kingsley group couldn't move, the other four groups moved. So that group moved away from the enemy. They've got a mask, so they're hoping to get it off the table. Um, the adventurers picked up the third mask, which is number two. Uh, the... Rugga Rugga moved towards that group there to confront them. So that was the four movements. So that was the end of their turn. And that marker, I looked it up and it's, um, depending on who you are, Ujaba considered it to be a ritual object and Mary Kinsley uh, considered it a valuable artifact. So that's up for grabs, whoever gets there first. Um, and that was the end of the first phase of turn three. Phase two of turn three, quite a lot going on in this uh, small area of the table. Um, this group here were um, a little bit closer to the soldiers and Mary Kingsley's group, fired arrows at them um, and secured two hits. Uh, so two soldiers were killed unable to, despite taking an additional uh, stress marker, which is another panic token, um, failed to save any of the hits, so they lost um, two, two soldiers dead. Mary Kingsley wasn't one of them though. Um, then 
This group here moved into the dangerous terrain, uh, got away with it, um, used their talking drum to get the bundukis to move up a little bit closer as well, which meant they got a stress marker. Um, Mary Kings's group uh, or side hasn't got any um, rally uh, options at all for this turn, so she's not going to be able to move for the whole of this turn. Um, however, this group here, controlled by the Kim and Gozi, did attack that group. Um, there was a melee in which um, both sides got an equal number of hits, therefore there were no kills and the defender was obliged to pull back. And then over here, the Raga Raga <coughs> fired their muskets, so there's actually a smoke marker that now because muskets need to be reloaded um, they got one hit on this group here which uh, took a couple of extra stress markers to um, take you know to go to go to ground it's known as uh, so to get more saving throws um, one kill and unfortunately on the terrifying death roll the um, chieftain who was with them was the one casualty so the chieftain has been removed from the table so um, as I say quite a lot going on just in that little area there of the table in that phase and then in the third phase of turn three both sides had this card to play which was three firing actions and um, Mary Kingsley's side didn't have a lot to do with that, partly because uh, her group couldn't fire and this group don't have a clear line of sight at anything and uh, this group had to reload um, so they reloaded but this group here fired their muskets onto that group without any success and then in return, this group fired their muskets there and managed to kill one other soldier. Um, and this group tried to go to ground as well. So they have now got four stress markers, two of which will now come off because uh, you take the panic tokens off at the end of the turn. And also the um, uh, these guys here threw spears into them. So the, that group is now down to uh, one soldier and Mary, Mary Kingsley. Um, so it's quite vulnerable. Don't want Mary to die at the very beginning of the campaign. And I think that was everything that happened in, in that exchange of fire. Turn four. Phase one and Mary Kingsley is now on her own. The final soldier has been killed by spears thrown from that group there. Um, the witch doctor tried to uh, use a ritual against her and failed because um, he drew a panic test. Now normally in the normal rules that would kill the witch doctor. But being uh, Uwaja, the, he has a special rule that he can sacrifice one of his uh, accompanying group. And the penalty for doing that, uh, he does live, but uh, the penalty for doing that is he can no longer um, draw stress tokens to increase his chances of success. So um, if he uses sorcery at all, um, then he's only going to be able to, you know, he's only if he takes the risk of drawing, he, he can't take the risk of drawing tokens, but he can, it means he can only uh, roll one dice. So his sorcery is going to be of limited strength for the rest of the game. And um, Mary had a panic token on her, so she rallied that off successfully. And this group here of adventurers have moved around this side of the hut so they now have a clear field of view to be able to use their rifles. Um, so 
limited amount of action in that go, but still, you know, significant things happening. So now on to phase two of turn four. Right, phase two of turn four and Mary Kingsley's um, column played all these cards uh, with the result that, is, that she is now a lot closer to that edge, which is actually, I forgot to say, is where the antiques dealer remains in turn four. But unfortunately now, um, there are no more movement activations available to her. So um, it could well be that the antique dealer ends up on another part of the table. Um, yeah, but she ended up there. Uh, this group moved forward towards the dangerous terrain. Uh, I think this group moved back possibly. Oh no, yeah, I think so. And that group there uh, attacked that group there, but lost um, and were compelled to to fall back. Whereas on the um, Forest Tribe side, the Jawas side, they played these two cards. This one was a complete waste of time because they failed to rally off the panic tokens there and there, and they failed to put a uh, token onto the uh, Ruga Ruga there, so nothing as a result of that. And then there were two moves, so they moved that group up to pick up the artifact, and they moved the Bundukas, Bunduki a little bit further forward, um, so that uh, they can continue to fire at one another. And that was uh, the end of that phase. So limited options in this turn. Um, Cards weren't particularly useful to either side. Um, Mary Kingsley's side had three influence actions, so they managed to rally one stress marker off of there and one off of there, off of the Ascaris, uh, but failed to rally off that one there from the Rugga Rugga and the uh, the largest side the forest tribe had four um, movement actions red foot so they couldn't attack anything couldn't do anything there or there because there's panic tokens on so they moved that group closer to that edge just in case the antiques dealer is still there next turn so that we'll block off Mary Kingsley's retreat and they moved this group of scouts down the hill and that was it they didn't do anything anything else because uh, I didn't want to move that group there I want to keep them in musket range so that was the end of their turn four right we're just at the start of turn five now um, Unfortunately for Mary, as you can see, there's a bit of a predicament. First setback is that the antique dealer has now moved across to the other side of the table. Um, and the second is that um, the uh, Awaja's side had the initiative, so sacrificed it in order to be able to make the first move. And their warriors have um, attacked Mary, who is now on her own. So she has no combat value. Um, if she's if she's sort of killed, as it were, um, she still comes back in the campaign, um, but her condition deteriorates. Uh, it goes it goes down there. If she's got four, I forget what what it's t it's termed as, but she'll go down to the next from healthy down to being poorly or something like that. Um, and it takes four uh, consecutive uh, declines for her to actually die in the campaign. But anyway, she has got this ability called Pacifist, which means that she rolls, even though she hasn't got combat value, she rolls 5d6, one for each of the five warriors attacking her. And for each success, those warriors don't take part in the melee. So let's um, roll these dice. I haven't been doing any dice rolling on camera. But let's just roll five d6s. And if she's very lucky, she'll have five fives or more and there won't be a melee. 
No, there are three um, attacking her. So, um, I've just got to check what happens in the rules with this. Yeah, um, basically she has no combat, um, so she's not going to have any successes in the melee, whereas the warriors are going to roll the three dice that they have remaining, and they're on a, they've got combat value of d8, so three d8s, Let's see how many successes they get. They get two successes, and that means that the loser removes two figures, and both groups draw a stress token, so in other words... Mary is removed from the game. Um, that mask falls into the hands of the warriors, but they do gain a stress token. So I'll just point it back there again. So they've gained that token number three, which is a mask. And they get a stress token, which is a panic token. So um, that stops them doing anything else until they rally that off for this turn. Okay, this uh, group here with the reporter have just got some payback um, in that they attack the warriors and beat them, meaning that they capture the two um objects that they were carrying the mask and the uh, artifact so they now have possession of them um and they push the warriors back um so that's a slight uh, payback for what happened to mary kingsley and the only other thing that's happened in the first phase of turn five is that this group of adventurers um have used the movement action to get very close now to this table edge here, where is it, there we are. Um, so if they can get off um, that center of that edge there, which they will be able to do in the next phase, um, then they can sell their mask to the antique dealer and get a few more victory points for it. Okay, in phase two of turn five, are the uh, the the rugger rugger there took another casualty from firing from well not firing from th spears thrown at them by this group. Um, the adventurers got off the table with them uh, masks and have sold it to the antiques dealer. This group here have just moved a little bit further towards the middle of the table, um, in you know just so they can. Uh, if turn six uh, continues, it may not do, then they might have a chance to get off the table with that mask. And that was about it, really. Um, so now we're on to phase three of turn turn five. OK, not much happened at the uh, in the final phase of turn five. Um, the Mary King's this side managed to rally off one uh, stress token and inflict one here and um, the Jawa's side uh, just had four passive movements so they've sort of moved their figures a bit more into the middle of the table where they can. Now it's turn six which is going to be the last turn of the game um, uh, but from the, from, for each action phase you roll a d8 and once five or more is scored the game ends immediately so it could end now. So I'm just going to do that dice roll on camera. And we've rolled a one. So the game is going to go on at least one more phase. OK, so at the beginning of turn six, I had to roll to see where the antique dealer would, might be meeting the party. And he was actually right over this end. So there's the... Um, People, the groups that are holding the mask would have had to have fought their way through uh, everything really and wouldn't, didn't have much chance. So I decided that they would retreat this way instead, try and avoid combat and avoid losing the mask at the very last moment. Um, and the uh, 
forest tribes are just pursuing them and that's about it really that's about all that happened in that guy so now uh, once again we have to roll a d8 to see if the game ends so five or more and the game ends no it's a four so it goes on for another phase at least okay so um not much happened in that phase other than um this group here were fired at by the Rugga Rugga. Um, yeah, that's right, the Rugga Rugga. And uh, they had to draw a stress token because they, they were fired at by muskets. And in doing so, they pulled out the um, wild animal token, which meant that uh, right at the end of the game, where it's not really going to have any effect, the lion comes into play. Um, unfortunately for the side that had to place it, all the uh, dangerous terrain was closer to their groups than to the enemies. But um, fortunately for them, um, it hasn't woken up from its slumber yet. Um, you have to roll to see if it's activated at the end of each phase. So as I say, this might be the end of the game now. Um, well, there might be one more phase, that depends on a dice roll and um, five or more and the game is finished now. Yeah, roll to six. So that's the game over. So I'm just going to toss up all the victory points and so on and assess where we are in the campaign so far. Okay, so um, just filling out the logs at the end of the game now then. Um, as this is going to be a sort of cumulative thing over six games. Um, probably you won't be surprised to hear that um, Mary's side won the, this actual game, uh, 22 points to six. Um, that allowed her to um, tick off a domain of knowledge, so she has gone for African customs and that will help her at the um, in the final um, round of the game uh, unfortunately both she and the chieftain on the opposite side uh, whose name was Motto Wanfa um, they both failed their dice rolls which means they their um, their health has deteriorated so they are now both poorly and um, both sides acquired one discovery so one has got artifacts Mary has got artifacts and Ujawa has got magical plants um, and they need to um, acquire those discoveries sort of multiple times in order to get uh, talents from them um, but that will become more apparent as we go on and the only thing that um, I failed to notice but I'll be able to catch up on that by reviewing the footage luckily is that every time a jar were successfully passed a ritual he was meant to tick off um, a box on the spiritual link chart so I'll have to um, I'll have to do that retrospectively um, by looking at the footage and that I think that is everything we have to do now um, the winner of this game gets to choose the route that they take to the next scenario um, but I'll do that um, as the preamble to the second part of this series so um, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to seeing how this campaign rolls out and see you on the next video. Bye for now.